make sure you think your way through it a little bit. Hi, I'm Jackie Reid and welcome to Lethal's Last Word for Round 17. This weekend is the moment of truth for a few teams as another loss will see their prospect of playing in finals slip through their fingers. Well, let's start off with the vital encounter between North Melbourne and Carlton Lee. Is it curtains for the loser of this match? Well, certainly getting to that stage, particularly for the Kangaroos. Um, I mean, magic is 12, 12 wins is the magical number to play finals. Now, the Kangaroos have only got the six wins up. So on that basis, they've got to win every game from now on if they don't win tonight. So it's really curtains almost for them, I think. That's a probably, that's rel that's a true uh, a true assessment of their chance tonight. Uh, Carlton just trying to keep in touch. And uh, the Kangaroos have played some really good footy in the last two weeks. Played a terrible last quarter and a bit against Brisbane to lose it after being in front. Fantastic against Richmond a couple of weeks ago. And Carlton played some good footy as well. So it's which one can actually turn it on tonight and play the best for the four quarters. Well, let's take a look at a couple of key issues. And you've pinpointed the two skippers, Mark Murphy and Andrew Swallow. Well, I think both sides have got an issue that when things aren't going well, I think the on-field on generalship of their leadership core isn't good enough. Now, you always look at the captains first, but really it's only the starting point. It's not just about the captain, but the captain is always the starting point, I guess, to that on-field general. And Swallow is a great uh, getter, good runner, outstanding young. Reminds me a little bit of uh, Simon Black, who plays for Lions. Un outstanding young man, outstanding footballer, but are they the person who can just generate that leadership and uh, hold the ship together when it's sinking. And Mark Murphy has the same uh, role for uh, for Carlton, of course, as the uh, as the mid-20s skipper. He had the really bad knock a few weeks ago, but he hopefully he's recovered from that now. Well, there's been plenty of talk about both of those skippers. Is that criticism unfair, or are there other players at both clubs that could handle it a little bit no, better? No, it has to be spread, and I think that's the problem with both those sides. And we sort of look at the next generation. Did Chris Judd and Jack Zubel. Now, Chris Judd was the former captain of, of Carlton, and I think Chris a bit the same. A fantastic performer in his own right, but not necessarily a fantastic on-field general. Um, we just know how good he's been. Getting late in his career, and he's had a terrific last uh, last month. And Jack Zebel, well, he's only 22. He plays rough and tough. He's been suspended a couple of times because of that. Whether he's the on-field general, time will tell. But certainly, that core for both teams... I mean, and the core has to be six, seven, eight players who hold the team together, not only can play good footy, but can just be that uh, the organ, the on-field organiser to keep composed when uh, when the pressure's on. So, maybe, so Judd, and Zub, uh, Judd and Zubel will be just as important as Murphy and Swallow will be for the two teams. Do you think it's a little alarming that the Blues still rely so heavily on Chris Judd? I mean, he turns 30 in a couple of weeks. Well, it is, but he's been a wonderful player. I mean, he's getting into the veteran category, but he's been one of the all-time greats. So he's, uh, it's not as if he's 35 and uh, like Boomer Harvey is still going well. He's, uh, he's still got plenty of footy left. Well, let's go to the key tactic and how would the Blues cope with the tall timber of the North Melbourne forwards? Well, one of the reasons that, uh, that the Kangaroos have played really well at Etihad Stadium is because they've got good height and obviously in the really still indoor stadium, the ball hangs in the air and, you, and you've got your Petrie and you've got Black and you've got Terence. So when they're marking the ball, they're really, uh, really dangerous players. So it does put the pressure on the Blues defenders. Jamison and Watson and McGuinness are the two that are actually now supplementing the defence. And, of course, Lockie Henderson. There's no doubt that Carlton would like to play Henderson in their forward line. But the question is, can they afford to weaken their defence that little bit? Where would you go with him? Would it go attack or defence? I reckon I'd be starting him forward, to be honest, and hope that Watson and McGuinness can do the... and, and Jamison can do the job. And uh, I mean, you can always go back, but if the ball keeps bouncing out of your forward 50 because you're not getting it in there, it puts your defence under enormous pressure anyway. OK, Lee, last word. Who's going to win this one? Well, I saw the Kangaroos' magnificent win against, uh, against Richmond only two weeks ago, so I'm going to go for the Kangaroos. So that's Lethal's last word on tonight's crucial clash between the Roos and Carlton. To an intriguing matchup on Sunday afternoon at the MCG, Richmond hosts the Fremantle Dockers and Lee, it's yet another big test for the Tigers to see if they can beat someone above them on the ladder. Well, absolutely. At the moment, the Dockers are six points ahead of them. So uh, not only that, they've got the home ground advantage at the MCG. They ran them to a point, of course, at Subiaco early in the year. So I would have thought it's just trying to keep in touch with the Dockers to maybe grab that top four position. That's even more important than the beating the side above them concept. Do you think this is a must-win for the Tigers, given the Dockers are such a depleted side this week? 
Well, the depleted side, Pavlich has hardly played all year. Ballantyne's out again this week, but really, they've uh, and McFarlane's out, so they are significant out. But they've had significant outs all year, the Dockers, and they've just played extremely well. We have a look at it. The Tigers last two weeks not so good. Terrible against the Kangaroos two weeks ago. Not just just got ahead of uh, got over the top of Gold Coast at uh, in Cairns. Dockers, yeah, good win over West Coast. Good win over St Kilda. They're they're in uh, they're in good form. But in terms of personnel, I think Richmond are closer to their uh, to their best level. Well, let's take a look at the key indicator for the match, and it's a battle of two distinctive styles: that free-flowing run of the Tigers and that suffocating Dockers defence. Well, as we know, Richmond play best when they can get a bit of run off halfback through uh, through Hooley and and through uh, and through Delidio, players like that. But one of the things I reckon when you play the Dockers, Geelong, I reckon, showed the competition how to go against uh, about against the Dockers at, uh, at Geelong a couple of weeks ago. I reckon first priority is to stop the Dockers scoring, because the way the Dockers play, they they are trying to stop the opposition scoring and they get you on the rebound. But I think the Richmond halfbacks have to be careful not to go charging forward of centre too much. I think they have to really a Delidio or someone like that has to hang back a little bit to make sure that the open forward line for the Dockers can never be run into unopposed. So from, the, from that point of view, sometimes the first priority is to defend and stop the Dockers. Second priority is to score yourself. I think that's the way to beat Fremantle the best. Well, let's take a look at a couple of key players for Fremantle. You've picked an unheralded pair, Chris Mayne and Michael Barlow. Well, they're two really important players to their structure. Barlow is really a hard-running getter. He, get, he gets the ball in tight, wins the clearances, but he runs into space. And Chris Mayne is really interesting, particularly when Pavlich is out. But Pavlich has been out most of the year. Ballantyne's out as well. He's kind of the medium-size, hard-running worker bee. He can mark the ball, Mayne, every now and again he'll jump in the air and mark it. But he covers so much ground, he's a good chaser, he's a good tackler. So the guy who wins it in close is Barlow. Uh, he, he leads I think, the Dockers in that particular part of their game. Monday's good as well. But Maine's going to be really crucial, crucial, particularly this week with a few players missing in that, uh, in that forward line bunch for, uh, for the Dockers. Well, let's have a look at your key matchup, and you've gone with Stephen Hill and Nathan Foley. Always look at the players who carry the ball. They're probably not going to be matched up directly against each other, but they play a similar role. Still think in the, in the, the Richmond set-up midfield, Foley is the main guy who's likely to run the ball away from the clearances, and that's what Stephen Hill can do for uh, for the Docker. So they're the type of players, particularly Hill. He gets the tagging role, tagging opponent, whether it's uh, Jackson this week. He usually gets someone sitting on him because when he runs into space 15 or 20 times, uh, that's when the Dockers can really open up the opposition defence. So those two players, I think, are really important. OK, Lee, last word. Who's going to win this one? I'm going to go for the Dockers. I just think that I think good defence normally beats a good attack, so I'm going to stick with the Dockers. Well, let's go to the rest of your tips for round 17, kicking off with the Kangas versus the Blues. Well, I think this is a 50-50 game. The Kangaroos at Eddie Hat, I'll go for them. Uh, Hawthorne in Launceston, they're going to win almost 10 out of 10 against the Bulldogs, the way the two teams are placed. St Kilda Port, I reckon Port will win about 8 out of 10 uh, against St Kilda, so I'll go with them at this point of time. Uh, Collingwood, well, I reckon Collingwood up at Metricon, about an 8 out of 10, they would beat the Suns. Uh, Essendon, well, the, anyone's about a 10 out of 10 against the Giants at this point of the Giants' development. Uh, the Lions, probably an 8 out of 10 against, uh, it's in Darwin, always difficult conditions, but uh, the Lions there. I think the Dock is about a 6 out of 10 for me against, uh, against Richmond, even in Melbourne. Um, the Cats, I reckon they were 9 out of 10 against the Crows because Dangerfield's out injured. And the Swans, I reckon the Eagles have got a real chance here, but I look at it, the Swans are a really good team, so a 6 times out of 10 I think they're going to beat the Eagles. So they're my tips. Well, it's certainly an interesting mix of games this weekend. Which one are you most looking forward to? Well, the Friday night game, the North Melbourne Carlton, because they can both play good footy. I'm interested to see which team can hold that performance together the best for the four, for the four quarters. Well, thanks for that, Lee. Thanks for watching another edition of Lethal's Last Word. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next time.